Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions. It is time for another wrap up. I decided that doing them bi-monthly is a bit easier because A, not every month I have something to talk about and B, this way I make sure to keep myself from rambling because otherwise it will be way too long. So let's do it. The September for August and the wrap up for September and August will be interesting because August had some controversial reads and September had some duds. But yeah, let's go. First up, we have all of this series. There will be a couple manga series that I like binged because I don't read it otherwise. I mostly binge it. So, read all of the House Husband volumes that have come out so far at least. I have nothing much to say about it because this is one story that resonated with me in a way that I did not expect. I watched the show and adored it, which by the way, we're getting a season two and yes, but then I read it and it's a, it's a weirdly comfort story for me because the whole house husband concept, how they have a cat, how the wife is an icon and how the gruff guy is like trying to be softer, but it's not really working and how he's excellent at chores though. Like he knows all of these tricks. That's what I loved in the show too. There's actually some good tips about housekeeping and stuff. Resonated with me as a whole dynamic. Now I'm not sure if the author is a woman or not, but it feels like it's a woman. You know what I mean? So even if it's not, they did a good job. I have nothing much to say about this because the plot doesn't matter here. It's the vibes, it's the characters, and it's the whole idea. If the concept suits you, then believe me, the whole thing will suit you. I need to collect all the volumes because this was absolutely great, <laughs> but I have nothing else to say about it. Now, next, beginning of August, I was watching Avatar. I was re-watching it while I was on holiday. So I finished it when I came back in August and I reread The Search and The Promise. I think I skipped all the other ones because those two are the only ones that I somewhat tolerated out of the graphic novels. I definitely liked The Search quite a bit, The Promise not so much, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was a random, random reread and a lot of people like it, but Again, I don't know what to tell you. I just did not. They don't vibe with me. I really dislike Aang in them because he behaves even younger than he did in the show. I hate his and Katara's relationship. I hate how pretty much everything deteriorates because they let a child be emperor. But yeah, it was still fun. The search especially because it didn't micro focus on the kids. It actually focused on... The parents so I did quite like that. Next up is I believe one controversially the other not so much two DNFs in August. I'll try not to ramble even though you'll see. First one casual vacancy so boring I have nothing else to say about it so boring and so gross I read like 150 pages maybe 200 and I remember just walking up to my dad and being like is there a point to this? And then he said no, so I just stopped reading it and I was like, thank you. Absolutely not. But that is not the controversial DNF. This is <laughs> Bridgerton. Now, didn't watch the show, don't plan to. I tried, people have tried to make me and I tried the book though. We're not gonna lie to each other. It was entertaining because it gives me that Wattpad feeling that I had when I was a teenager where it's like, it's so dramatic and so nonsensical that it's entertaining. The romance though. The romance though. I will start off by saying that I DNF'd one chapter after the incident when I realized that they would actually get him to apologize to her. I stopped reading. I think it was like <clears throat> page 350 out of like 380. So it was very, very late on in the book. 
no <laughs> just absolutely not that entire scene made me uncomfortable but the aftermath is what makes it even worse because they don't split them up they actually make him apologize so my, the only thing i will say about that situation is that if the roles were, were reversed no one in their right mind would like this book that is all all that i will say and i will not hear any argument about it honestly because it's one of the few things that i cannot stand even in fiction like i just cannot stand it in any any reality in any shape or form on any gender like it just no but up until then so i can actually give a constructive opinion up until then i was entertained by the Bridgerton relationships, like the siblings interacting. That was a lot of fun. But unfortunately, that's not the book, is it? No, the book is about the Duke and about his issues. He was an interesting character, I will say. Very cliche. I mean, that's the point, I think. But very interesting nonetheless, because whilst being the stereotypical playboy, he does have some substance to him, like the stuttering and the background and stuff. You grow to respect him, which makes what happened even worse. I wish nothing but hellfire upon Daphne Bridgerton. And the fact that she doesn't die after this, but they continue being married and have children is a sin. <laughs> is a sin to literature, to the romance genre that I don't even read. Just, just know anything you want to say as an argument for this situation, imagine saying it if the genders were reversed and if your argument still stands that please get away from people now that being said yes the other books might be better i've heard that enough times and anthony as a character was interesting though a bit overprotective. but anyway it was still very interesting i don't care i don't care because if this is the first thing that you present me with in a series I have no more opinions <laughs> to distribute to this author. Like, this was your f debut. This was your debut. I don't care if you improved because you obviously thought that this was fine to inflict upon the world. So no, I will not be reading the rest of the books ever. Next up, I read a lot more Dragonero. I read up until like volume 19. I read the color edition. I love this series. The only problem is that there's a chunk of volumes, these are all my dad's editions, that we have only online, like he hasn't bought them yet. And I hate reading on my computer. I read a lot of manga online, but I do that on my tablet. I suppose I could do this on my tablet too, but I just don't like it. I don't like reading online. So I like to avoid it. For manga, I can't avoid it, obviously, because I don't have that much money. So I have to read it like that. But for this, where the majority of the series we have on our bookshelves, I, I just am feeling a bit slumpy when I have to read it on my computer. But I read up until like volume 19. As I said, I really enjoy the story. The characters are kind of what makes it though, even though the fantasy aspect is pretty interesting. I wish there was more dragons, but apparently there will be. This is just build up. I mean, the first 20 volumes, but I love, I love the orc. I just love the orc. Every time he shows up, I'm happy. He's my favorite character. He's my favorite everything. <laughs> now, the last of August, I read another graphic novel shocking i'm slumpy during the summer i read i will not go in order because it's easier that way i continued reading the asterix is it that is that a comic or a graphic novel whichever i love them they're really funny i'm not going to linger on this because sort of like the way of the house husband not much to say about it it's just funny but next, I read The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 1. I never continued because, honestly, I didn't care to. I love Alan Moore. No shock there. Like, Watchmen, Vendetta, and even The Killing Joke are some of my favorites of all time. 
not really the killing joke but more so for the art you get it i love alan moore and i would love to read a book by him the league of extraordinary gentlemen though i'm not sure if you read it for someone wrote it for someone like on commission for dc or something it feels so shallow like not completely because it's still him but I didn't care about anything that was going on. I didn't care about anyone's motivations. They just kept going left and right. It feels like the kind of graphic novel that you can only imagine being adapted. Like Watchmen and Vendetta, and he said that himself, don't, don't need to be adapted. They weren't made to be adapted. This felt like it was aiming to be a TV show. And it might be a good TV show. It was not a fun graphic novel. So it's a no from me, but I still adore him. So... <laughs> doesn't really have any bearing on my opinion it just sucked i still finished it but it still sucked enough for me not to read the second one now september to be fair my reading months are like october through january <laughs> but september again a lot of graphic novels and a lot of manga i i wish i was sorry to say that because my channel's called wheel of tomes but if you think about it, if you're someone who doesn't read quickly, all of these mangas seem like tomes because there's a lot, like there's genuinely a lot to read. It can take you days of continuous reading to get through them. So frankly, I don't care <laughs> if you don't consider them tomes, but I do. So I'm still consistent, but I started the month off with more graphic novels. I read the Tea Dragon Society and the Tea Dragon Festival. I think I rated, I'm looking down at the ratings. I think I rated one four stars, the other three stars. Didn't love the series because, sort of like in my Ghibli movie video, stuff catered towards kids with a clear lesson doesn't have to be bad. But sometimes it's so clearly on the nose a five-year-old should hear this, that you have nothing to draw from the experience. It was very nice. The pastels are nice. The drawings are very nice. The concept is very nice, but not enough tea dragons, not enough actual plot, which might be the idea, but like at least give me a little. It's very on the nose with everything it says. Like nothing really feels like dialogue. It just feels like a life lesson did not have fun with it absolutely didn't have fun with it but is it stunning it's stunning we're not gonna deny that now i read i'm gonna kind of lump it all together because i read it very chaotically this month i read some more asterix i'm just gonna mention that a couple more volumes i think like two or three next up i started buying or my dad started buying we're both collectors the lucky luke comics those were my childhood favorites so now I'm reading through them again and I love them I love them so much like the Dalton brothers are so hilarious and their dynamic with Lucky Luke is just chef's kiss next up I read I'm trying to do this in order I read the tea dragon tapestry might as well add it into this clip i am really trying to go in order but it's difficult tea dragon tapestry that's the third one i liked it because it had the most like fall vibes and it kind of brought all the characters together but again very long and very pointless <laughs> for adults or anyone who isn't just into the visual marvel aspect of it next up is probably the only book i finished this month not read finished Stoneheart. This is part two of my childhood forgotten favorites, sort of like the the mystery novels that I was reading back in May or something, The Lost Bullet and that kind of ones. This is the second one. I read it in the library when I was in middle school and I remember loving it. I loved it more this time. Why? Because it was written by a Scottish author. He studied in Scotland and he lives there. I'm not sure if he's from there. I think he spent some time in the States. Irrelevant. <laughs> a UK author who got a Scottish literature degree. And I read it this time in English. Obviously, I read the translation last time. I adored it. Like, I love the writing style. I love how it's a middle grade Dan Brown. Like, it's fascinating, but also 
very engaging, fast paced. You really enjoy the history that he gives you with the statues and everything. I loved the plot overall. It feels a bit older than it should for 12 year olds, but I don't care because I absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, the other two books are MIA on the internet, so I'm gonna need to read the ebooks for them, which I don't love. But Stoneheart, absolute favorite in the genre and in the category. I would actually lump him in with Dan Brown before I would lump him in with a lot of middle grades that I love. Because it has that mystery aspect, it's very long, it has history and actual facts, it has a lot of trauma that they've both faced. I just love it. There are so many likable characters that just show up on the page and it screams good guy. And I feel like the bad guys are a bit more complex. It doesn't have a big bad that it like defeats at the end, it actually builds upon the next book. And I love that. I loved, loved, loved this book. This is the only book that I finished this month, so I want to rave about it. But if you're someone who likes Dan Brown, likes YA leaning into middle grade, and is kind of a facts in your books, books buff, especially if you like the UK, this is, I think, taking place in London, or at least England, you're gonna love it. Like, you're gonna love it. If you think you don't care about statues, you might start to. I'll try and do this in one clip, but I read the first Noragami Omnibus. I hadn't read the beginning of Noragami back when I read it in May because I didn't have them yet. I didn't want to read them online and I did just watch the show. It's a lot different from the show. Obviously they adapt some of this stuff very well. But they cut out a lot of stuff because the whole point of anime that are cut off after the second season is to get you to read it. So yeah, it wasn't a good adaptation. This is actually a whole lot different. A lot of things are shuffled. Not the same things happen to the same people or are done by them. Loved it though. Especially the Omnibus Edition is very, very nice and I can't wait for the second one to come out. Next, I read the entirety of Flying Witch. I also watched this in... September. I started watching it back in June and then I stopped because I was like, it's nothing special. I adored it. I think it's one of my favorite comfort anime now. It's like up there with Uramichi, which speaking of, I forgot. I also read Uramichi volume two in, in September, but I didn't really mention it because I read it before. So yeah, I bought the Omnibus for that one too, so I read it, but back to Flying Witch, it's such a comfort story. It takes itself so lightly. Like, it has a lot of rules and actually interesting stuff. There's a witch test, there's actual magical spells and stuff, but it does not take itself seriously. And like, it's just about the vibes, the plants, the, the flying, the familiars, a magical cafe with ghosts, magical creatures, harbinger of spring and summer. It's wonderful. It is wonderful and it is so, so comforting to read and watch. I recommend both the anime and the manga. I want to collect this. Like, unlike some of the other ones, I really, really want to collect this because I feel like I could read it a billion times. It is just so sweetness incarnate and I recommend it to everyone who will listen. If you like anything witchy, now might be the time to pick it up. It's not very Halloween-y, but up to the last chunk. Now I will quickly mention that I reread No Regrets because I bought the color edition a while ago, <laughs> never read it actually in English, and I just got the urge to reread it. It's my favorite bit of Attack on Titan, as you know, and it's the one bit that I think I will forever love, no matter how much interest I've lost in the whole series. I love it. These are probably my favorite characters in the story. Moving on to the last thing I read, finished in September, and that was Tomodachi Game. Now, watched the show in like a day. <laughs> couldn't stop watching it. Now that I look back on it, I have a bit more negative feelings <laughs> because I actually finished the manga. I've ranted enough about this because like I've writ written a review, which not necessarily for reading, but I've rambled 
as every volume went along. And if you see the stars dropping, you're going to see my comments and why that is. Which might not be the best idea because I don't always hide the spoilers. <laughs> but this made me angry because I was warned that it was a Squid Game type story. I was hoping it would be a bit more than that, which it was not. <laughs> Didn't watch Squid Game, don't plan to. But I was like, this is an anime. It's very short. Like, let's try it. The anime was great. The manga was not. <laughs> or at least was until, like, chapter 50 or not. I have so many issues with this that I don't even feel like listing them. Just look at my rants on Goodreads. In short, I will say it falls victim to the serial formulaic writing. In every game show type story, you basically have to make twists and reveals. I was a writer on episode when I was a young teenager. I know how it works. You have to make twists even though you hadn't planned for them. In every single game, every single character behaves exactly the same. Once they've been assigned a role, they do not leave it. There is no complexity to them, like in the slightest. <laughs> You can argue me on this, but I I read it in like two and a half days. My brain is so full of these people. Like, there's a character that disappears midway through, doesn't come back for like 40 to 50 chapters, and when they come back, they become the MC all of a sudden. We follow them, we're in their head. We're supposed to care about their ideals, which we do not, because they are very stupid and very unsuitable to the game, and it's very agitating to follow a stupid character when you know that others in the story are not. <laughs> and a couple characters are very sidelined and they're the best ones. I'm, not, I'm trying not to spoil it. Smart people are always smart except when they're not, which is usually as a plot device. Like I feel like this is just a victim of the genre. Like the whole game concept means that every game has to be bigger. It has to be better. It has to be more clever and the characters have to have more difficulty clearing the game, although they don't because they always clear it in the exact same way. So I was very angry with it. I was very angry with it because of how much I liked it. I hope that it would kind of transcend the limitations of this formula by like making a point, ending the game aspect quickly and then dealing with whatever else it wants to deal with. But it said, you know what, no. The game part is the most fun to me. I don't care about consistency. I don't care about the characters that much. I don't care about like an overall idea that I had. I just really love making the games, which fine, good for you. Absolutely good for you. But by the seventh game, you've kind of had enough. You've kind of had enough. Like nothing will surprise you anymore. If you've seen a thing done three times, you know it the seventh time. Like, you know exactly that if one character looks like they're going down, they have a secret plan. You know that if this character is a traitor, that they're probably not. You know that if this character is a traitor, you've known this all along. You know that if this character is hiding, that they're going to do something important. Like, it's just predictable if you focus on the wrong aspects of the story. I think it had potential because it wasn't, like, the squid game. It wasn't like, let's just murder each other. It tried to actually have an interesting psychological standpoint where it's testing relationships and friendships, but it soon kind of moved on from that. And it was just like, who can trick who? Who can kill who at this point? And violence. It was just about violence, even though that was prohibited from the first half. So I will just say it like this. I vastly enjoyed it before they went to the adult game. That's the least spoilery I could get. <laughs> And I think I've rambled enough. Will I watch the rest of the show when it comes out? Probably, because these characters are very, very entertaining, especially Yuichi, a fellow INTJ. I felt a lot of the things that he said very personally. But that being said, I do not want to hear of this ever again. <laughs> Lastly, for this month, I got halfway through Shadow Rising. I am struggling with it but I'm doing well. I started Vampire Academy 2. I'm struggling with it. I also started The Last Namsara. I put it on hold because I want to finish The Wheel of Time. That is it for the updates for this month. This was a very long wrap up.
Let me know what you read. Let me know what you thought of some of the things that I read because a lot of them can be controversial potentially. So just let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video, which will hopefully be something autumn spooky vibed because it's October finally, but I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.